Welcome again. In this video, we'll discuss about how to automate web-based application using Microsoft Power Automate. So we'll walk us through how we can use best practices for automating web application using Microsoft Power Automate. So please be available from start to end of this tutorial so that you will be able to understand each and every concept in detail. So for doing this, we'll use this demo website where we'll try to automate some of the stuff using Power Automate. And, and at the end of video, I will explain you some best practices or tips which you can follow while doing Power Automate with web-based application. Now, first of all, We want to launch the application so here we will use launch new chrome you can also use other browser it's not restricted it's totally depending on your preference so here launch mode is generally having two options either we can launch a new instance or attach a running instance so based on your preference you can use it but as of now i want to go ahead with launch new instance here i will either specify direct url or create a variable so as of now i want to create a variable so that i will use it for forever now i want to use browser url default value will be the url of website if you want you can add the descriptions which might require to refer when someone else who is referring this video or who is referring this flow now here we have created a variable. Let's add this variable into initial URL. For adding the variable, we'll use this. And right now, the initial URL will set up browser URL, which is a variable which we have created. Windows state, we want to keep it normal. Or if you want, you can maximize this or minimize it totally depending on your need. Advanced setting. If we want to clear a cache, we can enable it, clear a cookie, everything, whenever you want, we can enable it. Wait for page to be loaded. Yes, timeout on the page, page loads, it's by default 60, but you can increase or decrease totally depending on your need. And whenever we are dragging and dropping browser launch, browser instance, normally it will auto create a variable which is assigned for this actions to capture their instance name. Let's see this. After that, I want to fill the username and password on this website. Again, we'll create two more variables. Here, we can also use for the security point of view, we can also use several other ways. But as of now, we want to focus on the web-based automations. In next part of video, probably I will try to cover how we can use the configuration file. So by using configuration file, we can manage all those links and credentials within the Excel and call it out here for login purpose. Now here, I want to create username and password. So I will add here username default value which i want to enter it here this is my username so as of now i'm going ahead with the student account so we'll specify the student as a username and if you want you can mark as sensitive so whenever it will try to enter this username and password this will lock so let me click on save and next sections i want to use for the password Default value I want to use here. This is my password for this website. Add it and click on mark as sensitive. Click on save. Next, because this is a text box, the username and password is a text box. So what I will do, I will use input or maybe populate. Here, whenever you will type populate text field, you will find it out two options. Either you can use the UI automations, that is a form-based automation or you want to use web form filling. So because this is a web form filling, I will drag and drop the sections. 
automatically this will be browser instance and here we add the variable as username now we have to select the ui elements where we want to enter this detail so here just left mouse click and press control tab this will automatically fetch the selector at any point of time you want to modify the selector simply go here click on ui elements and from here you have to rename it so if you want to rename it this as a login username you can just add username so this will be easy for you to refer in future as of now i am keeping this as a scene because we have very less number of selectors for this automations but for futuristic point of view or for best practices you can always use rename and you can also add it selectors from here so here this is by default selected as a 12th field but you can also increase and decrease and customize it totally depending on your requirement you can also click on test tab to test this from scratch so whenever you will customize it first test it and then you can use it let me add the username fields as well as a part of selectors let me test it test for now this is particularly highlighting this field and now you can see success click on see and this field is tested successfully exactly similarly we can also use for the password so here i will specify the ui elements for the password as this one again left click and control tab password i will use this click on see now you can see the second ui element is generated successfully we, we can also zoom in zoom out from the images which you want to see it now Next one, I want to click on the web page. So I will just write here, click, click link on a web page because here you will get two options. One for the web page applications and second one, uh, first is for Windows based application and second is for browser based automations. Add UI elements, again, we'll select this. Similarly, like control and left click. Click on save and here you can also customize few other fields like send physical click. So send physical click is normally used for whenever we have UI based automation with us to specific physically move the mouse cursor over the elements. If you want, you can also disable this field. Here mouse position related to the elements, which you can also specify if some of the option is not working click on see now this is done as a part of best practice here we can segregate this flow into multiple ways for the login page we may add regions or specify it into subflows but rather than using subflows because this automation is very small i want to use reason so that we can segregate the fields so here i want to use the reason name as login so we'll move each of the sections here and then next options i want to use it for after login now we we are dividing our complete code into the segregated reason now let's try to log in it and see which all fields we have now once we log in, we'll get this option. So we can also adjust it on click. If a pop-up dialog appears, we can ask, press a button, or maybe we can add, close it. So based on the button sections, you can click it. So here we can just change it to press a button, okay, and then save it. So which will clear our pop-up button actions next options i want here is like we want to click on basics of human con computer interactions and then we'll extract this fields go back to the previous page and here you want to click on this option next option again we'll take this one we'll specify the fields 
which we want again left click and then control tab control plus left click which is the best options and here we don't have this option so do nothing and then save once we'll click on this options it will navigate it to this page so how we'll get to know so basics of computer extractions we want to get this field now let's extract this field so here so the data extractions we can use these two options so here you'll find it out for the ui automations is windows based automations and this sections will have get details of web pages or get details of web elements so ui elements i want to use add ui elements will fetch this information control plus left click and it will own text so this will have attribute name if you want you can specify it with the title source link href exist distribute so these are all options we have as of now i don't want to include anything variable produced is attribute value let's save this and we want to populate or display this message into display message box now here extracted text as a title and we'll specify the attribute really here to be populated message box icon if you want you can add it message box buttons okay and you can change it even either of the options and defaults keep message box always on top so these all options are available if you want you can use it now let's log out and see this flow is working or not so here we have divided into two reasons and from there on, let's run this flow so first it will launch the website try to enter the informations username and password you can see we have highlighted secret code and clicked on ok then pop up click button will click on the ok button then select basics of human interactions extractions will be done and this will be populated on message box which you can see it here so this is how we can automate our web based applications using Microsoft Power Automate without writing single line of code. We also have several other operations which we can use it as a part of best practices. First one, which I've already explained, related to UI elements. So when you have the UI elements, now you can see we have used different options. These options you can rename it so that you will be able to understand whenever you are returning back otherwise this will be mess up when you will return back from different activities you can also sort in ascending and descending order other than that you can expand all or collapse all you can see it if you want to delete any of the selectors unused selectors i can see you can remove it storing password is not suggested directly into the variable either we can use windows credentials or in the encrypted format or we can use configurations file the configuration file part i will cover in in further tutorial but here we i wanted to explain you in terms of web-based automations so that's the reason i've covered here now we can also add some exceptions so if any exceptions occur probably that will work so first exceptions let's see if we are getting exceptions i'm trying to use or enter username when you click on error we have this rule sections available so all errors so let's consider if we are getting uh, um, error while entering this detail maybe we'll try to repeat the actions or we want to go to the next actions or if you have created any label we'll directly jump into the label sections so this is how we can handle the exceptions let's consider we want to repeat this similarly when we try to enter the password which will again we can repeat it other than that we also have block label exceptions which we can handle it so i will definitely create one video on handling exceptions so this is error 
I'm just selecting error low and so this will create a block and if any exceptions will occur probably that will handle it reason wise so as of now I want to add this now you can see all the actions are moved within the block if I want to iterate it through probably I will iterate it here and even we and the error exceptions flow we can also run from the beginning or end of the block we can jump it directly so let's say if any error occurs we, we want to directly end of the block then probably use this we can also perform beginning of the block so let's see if this other than that we can also execute some other actions or next actions so based on our access or maybe we can throw an error and we can write down these errors into log file so i will also create one more video on how to create a log file within power automate so stay tuned on this channel to have more number of quality content so these are the factors which we can include while using web-based automations flow in microsoft or automate that's all about this video hope you enjoyed the content if you think so this will be useful don't forget to share within your circle thank you for watching